What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist and today I'm back to bring you 40 facts in the Warhammer 40k universe. Today we are doing a list lore as we dive into the weapons and war gear of the Primarchs. Now this will most likely be a two to three part series. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on the first six uh, Primarchs and then the following six and then the last six. Now as we all know there's 20 Primarchs but two of them are currently unknown. That is the second legion and the 11th legion. So we will be going um, in the order of the numbered legion. So for example, the first legion is that of the Dark Angels. So we'll be covering Lionel Johnson's weapons and war gear first. And we will be going all the way up to Rogel Dorn for this video. So sit tight, grab some popcorn as we sit down and listen to the weapons of these legendary warriors. Starting with Lion L. Johnson. Now, as I've said before, the Primarch of the Dark Angels is known as the Lion, or Lionel Johnson. Now, he was scattered along with the rest of his Primarchs to the far corners of the galaxy, and he finally came to rest on the planet of Caliban, a beautiful but blighted world tainted by chaos. Now, L. Johnson was renowned for a level of strategic brilliance and martial prowess that rivaled only Horus, but he was very secretive in his nature. Now let's jump into his weapons. So first off, we have the Lion Helm. The Lion Helm is a sacred object of the Dark Angel Space Marine chapter. It is said to have been worn by the Primarch himself, and it takes the form of a winged Mark VII power armor helmet. This helm is carried by a Watcher in the dark and built into the helmet is a protective force field which can be activated even when the helm is not being worn. Currently, it is worn by the Supreme Grand Master Az Azrael. And then we have the Lion Sword. Now there's a lot of lore on the Lion Sword itself, so if you want to get the full lore, I'd greatly recommend you guys head over to the Lexicanum and search up the Lion Sword. I will be posting links to um, the artists as well as the lore so you guys can get the full force of it down below in the description. But for now, let's get a little bit of more lore on the Lion Sword. So the Lion Sword is the great sword of the Primarch of the Dark Angels. The sword was broken in antiquity and then lost. But now it is rumored to be carried by the mysterious fallen angel Cypher, who seeks to reforge it and then present it to the Emperor of Mankind, either by obtaining absolution or forgiveness. It is all currently unknown to us at this time. Next up is the Second Legion, but currently it is unknown to us. They have been lost and purged from the records of the Imperium. So then we dive into the Third Legion, the Emperor's Children, and their Primarch, Fulgrim. Now Fulgrim also goes by the name of the Phoetian, the Illuminator, and the Prefector of Kamos, and he was one of the 20 Primarchs created by the Emperor. Now Fulgrim, just like the other Primarchs, was sucked away from Terra, and he landed in a faraway world. Um, now in this world, he was constantly trying to emulate the Emperor by perfecting himself. He became obsessed with art, beauty, perfection, and that eventually led to his downfall and he fell into chaos. And now on to his war gear, the Gilded Panoply. Now Fulgrim wore a suit of beautifully mastercrafted artificial power armor that was wrapped in purple and gold ornaments. And then we have Firebrand, which is one of a number of arms that Fulgrim often carried as the mood took him. It was Firebrand, a mastercrafted Volkite charger. And lastly, we have the Blade of the Lair. Now Fulgrim wielded the center, two-handed curved single-edged demon blade that he discovered in the Xenos world of Laren throughout the later days of the Great Crusade. Um, with it, he slew his Primarch brother, Ferris Manus, during the Dropsite Massacre. It is said that the demon blade possessed uh, Fulgrim during this time, and that was why he was able to overpower his once friend and slay him. Next up, we have the Primarch of the Iron Warriors, the 4th Legion, Percherabo. Now Percherabo, um, he was pretty... <laughs> uh, how do I put this? He's not very well liked, I guess. Not many people play him. I don't really see that many Iron Warriors armies out there. So, that being said, he is kind of bitter. <laughs> and he is feeling marginalized by the Imperium. So it kind of fits, you know 
his lore fits the way we see him. <laughs> but anyway, um, he did side with Horus during the Horus Heresy, and then he did become a demon prince. Um, and he, just like his Iron Warriors, had a natural affinity towards technology, and he was very strong um, logic-wise, but he did uh, lack faith in the Emperor. So that being said, let's dive into his weaponry. So let's begin with his artificial terminator armor known as the Logos. Now Perturabo's Panoply of War was a unique and highly customized suit of artificially crafted cataphracty terminator armor. It had heavy layered ceramite and then it made him look kind of like a tank. Now this armor was of his own design and it was known as the Logos as I said before. It could take on a lot of damage um, and provided a phenomenal level of defense against outside attacks. Uh, it also contained a sophisticated command and control system, which linked him cybernetically to every facet of his forces under his disposal. Um, it also incorporated the finest technology of its age, including a teleport homer, a cortex controller, a nuncio vox, and a cogniz signum. So this dude was decked out. Then we have his famed thunder hammer, Forge Breaker. Now, Forgebreaker was an exquisite warhammer crafted by Fulgrim for Ferris Manus. Um, it was known as the greatest warhammer of its time. Um, it was the length of a mortal man. It was fashioned by an alloy that was as unbreakable. It was unknown uh, what type of material this was, but like I said before, it was basically indestructible. The head of the hammer was steel and golden. Its rear razor spike was the killing face of the hammer. Uh, following the death of Ferris at the hands of Fulgrim during the Dropsite Massacre, Horus was presented this weapon, uh, which he then gave to Percherabo as a symbolic gesture of the Iron Warrior's newfound allegiance to Horus and Chaos. So yeah, it, it was originally Ferris Manus, and then Horus had it, and then Horus gifted it to Percherabo. So it's, it's changed hands a lot, but currently Percherabo wields it. Now, for range uh, support, he does have a wrist-mounted combi bolter. Um, now, it was a variation of the ubiquitous Space Marine weapon. Its magazines were loaded with heavy, custom-fabricated bolter rounds and they were able to punch through Space Marine battle plate with ease. Um, those victims of this weapon would ignite like human pyres with every detonation of the bolter. So it was kind of like an incendiary round as well as like a... I don't even know, like a, like a grenade <laughs> going off inside you. So yeah, that was pretty, pretty nasty. And lastly, we come to the Tormentor. Now the Tormentor was a converted Shadow Sword super heavy tank. Uh, it had additional armor plating on all sides, and it also had extended command and control functions. Now to accommodate the Lord of Iron's, you know, heavy build, um, the vehicle's superstructure and engine were radically overhauled, and its main weapons were also enhanced. So it was a very devastating killing machine in the arsenal of the Iron Warriors. So yeah, even though not a lot of people play this army, it's pretty badass. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, you know, Iron Warriors, they've, they've got some firepower to them. And now we move on to the next Primarch, Jagtai Khan, aka the Great Khan, aka the Warhawk. And he was Primarch to the White Scar Space Marine Legion, aka the Fifth Legion. Now he was known for his secluded and fierce nature, and he was commonly overlooked by all of his fellow Primarchs since he was seen as a barbarian, but in truth he was a very highly cultured individual. So now let's jump into his weaponry. So in a lot of images it shows that the Khan wielded a power smitar, smiter, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, it's basically a curved blade, but it did have um, a power field to it so it could cut a lot easier. Also, he's oftentimes seen riding, um, I don't know if it was Moon Moonfang, I believe that was the name of this bike. Um, not a lot of lore on his weaponry, but as far as I know, he did ride uh, bikes into Battlefield, and he did, he did wield that power Smidar. Sorry if I mispronounced it, guys, but you guys know the deal. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Rogodorn, the 7th Legion Primarch. So Rogodorn is known as the Vigilant, the Praetorian of Terra, and the Unyielding One. He is the Primarch of the Imperial Fist Space Marine Legion, and one of the greatest heroes in all of the history of the Imperium of Man. He is a being of thunderous zeal, and stone made manifest is how many described him. He had a stern and naturally unsmiling face, 
topped with an unruly stock of short bone white hair. His zeal was that of a fire of a son who believed in his father's dream for the Imperium without reservation and without question. His weapons and war gear consisted of the Storm's Teeth, which was a colossal chainsword, too heavy for anyone but a Primarch to wield, and it is said to have been crafted by the best weapon masters of the Inuit before coming to the Emperor. Its raisin teeth can shred metal, stone, and flesh with ease, and while the Primarch of the Imperial Fist Legion has many arms at his disposal, some relics of far greater power, it is this blade which has served him faithfully for so long that he favors most. Also, he wields the Voice of Terra. Now, it was presented to Rogodorn by the Legio Custodes to honor the Primarch's appointment as Praetorian of Terra. It is a tactical vulture which follows the pattern of the Legio Custodes' own weaponry, albeit redesigned for the hand of a mighty Primarch to wield. He also has the Ulrich Armor. Commonly dressed in Baroque power armor of burnished copper and gold, Dorn also wore a red velvet cloak and an unfurled eagle wing motif, which was heavily present on much of his war gear, most notably a decorative section of his armor that rose above his shoulders. Now he also had a teleport homer as well as frag grenades. Um, and also he had the Atos Dios. Following several attempts on Rogodorn's life during the outbreak of the Horus Heresy, the Mago Telluria constructed him a unique, heavily customized personal Thunderhawk gunship to convey him both into and out of battle. Um, it was equipped with turbo lasers and a single Titan Void Shield. So he was riding some pretty pimpin', uh, <laughs> pretty pimpin' Thunderhawks there with a freaking Void Shield of a Titan. That's that's some defensive power right there. And unfortunately, guys, that is where I will cut part one to this video. Uh, please stay subscribed and stay tuned because tomorrow we will be going through Conrad Kerr's Sanguinius, Ferris Manus, Angron, Gilliman, and everybody's favorite, Mortarian. So stay tuned for those weapons and war gear. If you guys want to learn more information, uh, we do have a 40 facts on each and every Primark done. So head on over to our playlist on the Primarchs of 40k and you guys can get to learn more of their backstory besides just their weaponry. Now if you guys are interested about weaponry, we also have a playlist on the weapons and war gear of all the races in 40k. So if you want to learn about what the Harlequins bring into battle or what the Inquisitors, you know, wield to share urge not share but to destroy heresy uh check that out also don't forget um we do have or we did have giveaways going so stay tuned to our videos to find out if you guys won any of those awesome prizes uh don't forget we do have an instagram a twitter a patreon and a facebook page so head on over there for more things 40k and as always guys i am the sound alchemist part of one mind syndicate and i'll catch you guys tomorrow